Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. In seven episodes into our Air Hammer test series, we today finally want to do something a bit different. Since the beginning, many of you asked, well, if you made the world's first Air Hammer power dyno, maybe you guys can measure SDS rotary hammer impacting beans and compare its power to air hammers, since we and you and seemingly the internet have no real clue how they compare. It appears in countless forum posts, debates about this very subject. As a matter of fact, we reached out to a few power tool brands and asked this very thing, with one response basically saying, yeah, we have no idea, but let us know if you find out. And it makes sense why people want to know. When it comes to cordless nowadays, there's an answer for nearly everything that has been used with corded or air power. But an air hammer, which is just a piston moving back and forth inside of a cylinder from directed air pressure, no real handheld cordless answer to that yet, but the closest, by our math, is an SDS rotary hammer tool in hammer mode. Enter today's contestant, and no, it's not a rigid, that's just the case it arrived to us in, the Milwaukee 2717 SDS Max hammer drill. This one is courtesy of a viewer and now a friend of the channel, Dave Eaton. This is their 1 in 9 16th capacity model, the largest SDS category of sizes, which is above SDS and SDS Plus. This is about as big as we'd say anyone would realistically be willing to hold horizontally for very long and use it as they might an air hammer. And big it is, next to the average air hammer, this thing is practically Armageddon sized. But being our first ever SDS hammer, we wanted to give this class of tools the best shot to compare to traditional air hammers to sort of see where they're at and if we want to do more. But with that size, you do get five foot pounds of impact energy, which is, well, not very useful for comparing to air hammers, which mostly lack power figures or really anything else that we know of. I didn't even know impact energy could be expressed in torque figures. But moving on, this drill can be used in multiple different settings, but most importantly for us, hammer only mode, which we need for comparison. But those modes do explain why this tool may be so big. It has two tasks. One to be a very high torque drill capable of drilling one and nine sixteenths holes in concrete, and two to hammer while doing that with way more force than a typical cordless hammer drill that you might have at home. And how does it do that? Well, the largest versions of this sort of electric hammering action come in the form of chippers and jackhammers. They use a large piston moving up and down to compress air in a cylinder that acts against another piston on the opposing end. That compressing of air pushes the opposing piston into the hammer bit. That air cushion makes for less vibration and stress on the tool. The primary piston is driven by a connecting rod on a rotating crank, similar to the combustion engine in your car. Well, on an SDS drill, they have two tasks to perform, as we mentioned, so switching between them goes from a standard drill mode to drill and hammer mode, like shown here. This uses an asymmetric sort of wobble cam, or usually a yoke freely moving on a center pinned axis, to perform its own version of compressing air against an opposing piston that hits a rod or directly onto the bit. In case you didn't know or were curious, this is also similar to how reciprocating saws work. A fixed slotted cam in this case, causing that back and forth movement. But on a recip saw, if you accidentally impact something on the end of that tip of the blade, all that force is transferred directly into the tool and at you because of that fixed nature of the pin and cam lobe. No air cushion piston here, but it works best for that back and forth sawing motion versus sudden impact blows. Now back to our SDS, we still got all this motor action down here. We've got a gear transfer case and drilling action over here, which is why these tools are so expensive. This example being a cool $500 bear actually. But let's get into it. How does all that mumbo jumbo compare to an old fashioned air hammer? You'll have noticed by now to do so, we lopped off the end of this Milwaukee SDS Max bit to act more like an air hammer bit. We'll be doing these tests with the 9 amp hour battery this one showed up with. We'll also throw in a test with a high output battery towards the end so you can see that. Our first test is called Max Power 5 Seconds of Impacting. Here's a random assortment of long barrel air hammers on screen being compared against this snap on air hammer first. So 4,477 PSI from the snap on a bit up from the Mac tools offering and both having a gap over the Sun X, which can be bought on Amazon and elsewhere. Now let's finally see how the Milwaukee SDS Max lands. Here's its Max run in red.
4,195. If you're wondering why that's an exciting figure, it's because it means SDS hammer drills can be compared to some really quite up there for one shank air hammers. If you're wondering about that out the gate performance you're seeing though, don't read too much into it. This model is sporting 3,000 blows per minute as it's an SDS hammer, not an air hammer. Air hammers here being closer to about 2,000 blows per minute. So that's just the Milwaukee making early progress from hitting more often before things get real tight. And we're talking about 18,000 pounds or 8,200 kilograms of force at the wedge and load cell here. So that's some tight beans for sure. But can a tool of this size reel in those beans? Let's find out in our minimum power test. Same duration, but trying to minimize power with just trigger control. Here's how the Sun X was able to very impressively throttle back that power versus the others in yellow. Lower is better. Just 81 PSI and the Mac, well, yeah, still quite a bit higher, even though in the grand scheme of air hammers on this channel, we've seen much worse. Here's the Milwaukee 2717. One ninety eight, quite good for a tool of this size. Not bad when you think about it. Okay, last test before we head over to the rank chart to see how this type of tool stacks up on our all air hammer chart. So far, we've only tested air hammers, to be honest, and that's all we thought we would use this dyno for. So this is where we would be turning these tools up to a higher shop line realistic pressure instead of the 90 PSI while running that we usually test at. Here's what that looks like. That snap-on picks up quite a bit, up to 5,233, demonstrating the sort of story we're trying to tell in this comparison to cordless. Yeah, no real BCS valve for us to open here. Just the battery fresh off the charger is the best we can do. So let's see it. So the Milwaukee's 4195 run gets turned into a 4216, basically the same. Speaks well to the consistency of this dyno we often see, but not great for pumping up those numbers. But still very much in the mix with the other air hammers here, which honestly we were surprised to see today. And in case you're curious, here's the XE 8.0 high output battery versus the 9 amp hour you've been seeing. Not too different really, with thin margin of error. We theorize when it comes to bottlenecks of power and putting a strain on that motor and battery, it's likely the large diameter drilling task that's asking more of everything than that back and forth wobbling of the piston compressing air, which is likely a set amount of force that's unlikely to change very much. Onto the ring chart, we want to throw this on there just to see, but may not be leaving SDSs on here and let us know your thoughts. Starting here for now, position between the Sun X and the Mac, we have its weight in class, which is 14.5 pounds and an SDS Max class. Yikes, yeah, she's a chonker. Then the hammer runs here, which are turned into points as 42 and 422, as there was not much change we could inject into its BCS run. Even a different battery didn't really help. Then for the trigger control, that's its max run minus its minimum run, just trigger modulation being the difference. Quite good, 80 points. At 18.75 inches long, yeah, this rank list wasn't made with tools like this in mind. Not gonna be fitting this kind of tool everywhere you might an air hammer, if that matters to you on a job site. 22.5 points, which is somehow not a record low thanks to the DeWalt air hammer. Then price, also wrapping up a lot of use into this cost, not really being exercised in our tests, i.e. drilling, but 499 makes for just 3.6 points, which totals 570.1, not bad, just below the Sioux Tools gun, which considering everything the SDS Max can do, it's probably a better buy than at those prices, and it's situated above the Sunex. But if you're just chipping or hammering, the 4,121 of this Milwaukee that it made today was eclipsed by an IR-119 Max up here at 4,821 PSI, all while being around one-third the size, weight, and cost. So that still remains a deal in package size that's hard to ignore when it comes to 401 shank air hammers versus SDS.
Some surprising stuff today though, SDS Max can be used in place of some pretty top shelf 401 air hammers. Something that few knew and no one really had the numbers to support. This tool makes a lot of sense if you're going to be using its weight to help you out, like when held vertically on top of something. And while in short bursts it can replicate the power of air hammers when held in other ways, but can SDS Plus or standard SDS size cordless do that as well? Are other brands bringing more hammering beans than this Milwaukee? We still don't know. Leave your suggestions and requests below, and maybe we'll find out if you guys want to see more. Click subscribe to see that, and thanks for watching.